Hey guys, Justin here. I'm in Fremantle right now, inside Crest Fremantle, which is actually just along the road. Over there is Fremantle Station with the shed. <clears throat> and uh, we're inside a hotel right now where my parents are staying. Just, just, I, I just stay here overnight yesterday. The first time ever actually staying outside of Curtin in Perth. Now, today we're gonna go to Rottnest Island. It's actually my first time going to Rottnest Island, although the weather's not that great, but. So, we will be taking the express ferry from B Shed, uh, Ferry Fremantle, just over there. And we enjoy our day in Frim and we enjoy our day in Rottnest. Now, this is gonna be a very special vlog because I don't want to break up Justin Eater into a separate episode. So, I'm gonna do this together with Justin Eater later on in or on Rottnest Island. With a vlog plus Justin Eater. This is gonna be a very special one because <clears throat> this will be premiered and it will be the first time ever I should be premiering such, such a Justin Eater video later on. So, later on we're gonna go down and uh, we'll pass through the Fremantle Station bus interchange and we'll walk all the way back there to where the ferry is. So that's why our ferry is scheduled at 9 30 p.m. Uh, 9 30 a.m. So that's why we're gonna go there very soon. Now it's around 8 30 in the morning. So, ready to go. Well, here we are crossing the tracks now there are no more trains running through here before it was part of the Fremantle line like 40 years ago so <laughs> yes this section has been withdrawn and closed off and it just turned to Fremantle over there which uh, if you just walk this track you can just get to Fremantle station which is just over there Fremantle station nice now, this track leads down to South Beach which was the original terminus for the Fremantle line 40 something years ago but uh, there are no electric cables here, you can see completely empty, so that's why the A-series cannot run down here. It's more likely for freight trains now. Sometimes might have freight trains driving through, but no passenger trains. Before they terminate at South Beach down there, which a lot of people actually, a lot of enthusiasts actually want that to come back because it's actually pretty convenient to go down to South Beach. Right now, the only way to go down to South Beach is actually using the Fremantle Cat, which they are planning to withdraw that as well, so that's why. I, so if they withdraw the blue cat and bring back the red cat, the red cat won't, won't go down there. So that's why. Then without the blue cat, it's completely very inconvenient to get down to South Beach, which is actually, I don't, know, I don't really treat South Beach as a travel destination because there's not a, lot, not a lot of things down there. But here we are at Bichette Terminal. There's some people waiting. I don't know whether that, that is the spot, but we'll look around and uh, we'll find the spot and ready to go across to Rottnest Island. There's the uh, WA Maritime Museum, which uh, they have just been to yesterday. All right, walking over and first time stepping on Rottnest Island, guys. Now, we have planned of some activities on Rottnest Island, including some walks and a museum. And uh, we also plan to actually take the train on there, but I don't think there are actually train services over there right now. train so hopefully there is but my dad just said there won't be so we'll see I think there it is coming in here I don't know <laughs> I've seen some of them in the city but actually I just want to say if you take from the city it's ridiculous don't take in the city even if you're actually staying in the city take the train in here and then board here because literally it's ridiculous to take from the city it uh, it takes two hours to get to Rottnest if you're bored in the city. Yeah, there's my, there's our, there's our boat, there's our ferry. It takes two hours! Yes, I saw the uh, timetable. There's one depart at City, Barrack Square, Barrack Street Jetty, which is in, next to Elizabeth Key. 8.45, and then there will be a middle stop at Northport over there, which is Fremantle, Fremantle Northport. Here is Fremantle B Shed, which the, uh, ex the, the ferries from City would not stop at. So, it just goes from uh, City via the Northport of jetty over there and then goes to uh, Rottnest. Jeez Louise, it takes one hour and a half to get to Northport from the city. Are you bullshitting me with that? It takes literally triple the time of taking the train. Oh gosh! Don't step into the water. It takes literally triple the time just to get to Fremantle. And it takes another half an hour. So that's why it's two hours if you take from the city. Wow, if you take here, it's just 30 minutes to just go over to, to Rottnest Island. Wow, if you take from the city with the trains over here, it's 30 minutes. So if you take the train, it's 30 minutes, and you take the ferry, it's 30 minutes, just an hour. 
if you want to get to the city, get from the city to Rottnest with the different me methods. Why if you take this directly from the city, it would take you two hours. Like what? That's why my parents decided to just stay here and stay in the hotel here and board this ferry instead. If not, we don't have enough time to actually get into Broadness Island and enjoy the day, so that's why. Here's our ferry. Now, you know I'm not a fan of ferries, so that's why I'm not a ferry enthusiast, but this is a transport thing and it's just a vlog, so that's why I'm filming it. We're let it park. Departed. Probably gonna sleep for this because I already feel a little bit drowsy over here. Not like, not like sick, but we were actually just like a little bit drowsy, and like, yeah. Don't know what it is, but this uh, this ferry is shaking very a lot, 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 like like a roller coaster, literally like a roller coaster right now. Someone's actually already shouted and screamed inside the, the inside the ferry because right here it's, it's just like it's just going up and down and just making a hard beat so fast like taking a roller coaster but oh my god now now if you actually like get seasick then you might be in trouble so be careful when you take this thing if you, if you can easily get seasick remember to uh, get some things ready and just get prepared but uh, I don't really actually get seasick, so that's why. Now it's probably because of the boat. Because the boat is just like, just like not enough, like having enough, like what are those things called? It doesn't stay on the water surface that well. So I think when there are like, when there are waves, the boat just flies, leaves the water surface, and then just boom, like that, fly, fly above a little bit. So that's why. That is that crazy right now. This is gonna be crazy here. Yep. You can feel it when it goes up. So this is really crazy. Oh my gosh, it's even this is like like those canoe, like go kayaking. This is how it feels like when it goes kayaking. Time to get off that crazy ride. That was ridiculous. All right, we made it to Rottnest. Well, it's actually very hot over here. Not that cold. Here we are at Rottnest Island. If you continue swimming over there, like for a thousand miles or anything, that would be like Africa. So <laughs> that's why. Uh, oh gosh, there's a big, big old water puddle right here. Jeez. Okay, Rottnest. First time stepping on this land. And uh, there goes the return trip back to Fremantle. And uh, we'll enjoy our time. Let's go over there first and we'll see where we're gonna go next. Made to the main spot after walking from the jetty. Up oh, there's our restaurant over there, which we're gonna eat in the afternoon. Isola over there. So, yep. Later on, we'll have the Justin Eater episode included in this vlog. So that's why that will be the next part. You can, if you just want to watch the Justin Eater episode part, you can check out the chapters at the bottom in the description to just watch the eating episode. I mean, just to eat, just to see the eating part. Of course, I appreciate if you keep on watching the whole Rottnest vlog over here. Made it to the uh, to the uh, visitor center over here. This thing looks nice. Don't know what that is. You can read some of the information. Vajmap. I don't know how to pronounce that. Vajmap. Rottnest is Western Australia. Stop by the visitor center. Check rottnestislands.com. There's all of them. Gold cultural Aboriginal tours and experience. 
and uh, later on we're gonna go to the lighthouse and uh, there's also coaches which we didn't actually book any if you actually know how to actually uh, 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 you know how to uh, use a bicycle you can go ahead and enjoy the bicycle tour or you can actually use the Segway tours over here don't know what that is it's like some sort of tractor things and this stuff so you can go skydiving and of course you can hike all the way up so I also have a golf course nine hole golf course here's the visitor center there's also hotels here maybe some of the uh, some of these over here you can actually stay and of course there are early ferries to get you back to Fremantle or even if you want to go to Barrack Street just goes all the way two hours but it's just a 30 minute boat ride already like murdered almost all of the uh, all of the uh, all of the uh, passengers on board <laughs> everyone just goes yeah! like that so <laughs> let alone if you do two hours look at the waves oh my gosh look at that wave over there it's bad All right, first stop at Island Gypsy, which is actually a souvenir nice shop. Souvenir. Yeah, let's just go in there, have a quick look. Just walk from the jetty, which is down there. Loop up with the ramp. Got these very <laughs> cute looking kids sunglasses. That's pretty cute. If I can put them back in, that'll be great. That'll be great if I can put them back in. There we go. Snorkeling glasses, shirts for kids. All this kid zone over here. All right, that's it for that. Next part. We got these two cockers chasing each other and they're just like beating each other up earlier on. I didn't get my camera up on time. That's unfortunate. Well, there that goes. More cockers. Oh, this one's so cute. It's literally standing like this. Oh, yeah. oh there's a baby coming out too. There's a Joey. A little Joey. A little Joey inside the pocket. There's a little Joey sticking out at the bottom. Little Joey. All right, time for museum. Just walk out from the main road. Come in here, museum. What? I, I, I'm not even actually gonna waste time actually pronouncing the. Oh, 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 oh. X Trans Perth buses. First, get that on the shot. X Trans Perth buses. X Trans Perth on Rottnest Island. That's an NH too, it looks like. X Trans Perth bus is spotted. Later we go in there. X Trans Perth. Is that X Trans Perth? But this number is B94. Looks like an NH. Is that X Trans Perth? I don't know, but it looks like. There it goes. That's an NH. That's a very clear an NH. There that goes. 1713. I can see the number. That's X Trans Perth. Yes, it is. 1713. Yep, there that goes. That's an NH right there. Nice. I can see the reflection of the number under the shades. Nice. There that goes. I just saw that, so I just have to run over here. X Trans Perth NH on that tour bus over there. And right, let's go back to the museum now. I'm not gonna read any of these, but we're just gonna quick take a quick look. We're gonna talk about a little bit of the museum history though. 
This building, constructed in 1857, tells the story of, I'm not gonna say that, through its changes in use over many decades. Okay. There's an uh, Aboriginal culture museum far behind, before, because Fremantle and Rottnest before, before tourism openings for the prison. That's basically what it is. So. Quick run through of the whole thing. It's been a while since we have actually done a live, a daily live vlog, a tourism vlog like this. Lighthouse keeper, scarf, gloves, and jackets. Lighthouse keeper is one of the uh, hardest jobs in the whole world to do. So. Here's the settlement after the uh, prison. Memorial stone. And there's some, uh, there's some speeches and talks you can actually go ahead and listen to. The pictures. And here's a uh, movie theater right here for a little bit of a documentary. Looks like that rock on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, the on the uh, on the uh, on the, on the uh, what's that thing called? Crap, jetty, that big pillar thing is actually a very memorial thing. Some prisoners here. And in here, which is the last part of the museum, with some extra things in here and some photo galleries, you can go and check those out. Some, some uh, seashells, sea animals, and what is that? Rottenness Island bobtail specimen. Okay, some of the uh, specimens up here. Including a big old snake too, wow. I don't know what is with the focus today on the camera. It literally doesn't focus. All right, three minutes and a half completed the whole museum. Well, back outside now. Made it outside. We got more. Made it outside. We got more buses here, including another NH back there. Let's see whether I can see whether that what number that is. Now I just confirmed with uh, Perth Bus Info online, which is actually Dave's website, I think. The uh, earlier bus that I saw, 1GRL441, that is by Australian Pinnacles Tours now. And uh, it is X Trans Perth, XTP1713. And there's another one over there now. That's another NH. I can go and check out the number for that one. There's B97 for this little thing right here. This is, uh, this is a Volvo bus, isn't it? Not so sure about that one, but this is for sure not an X-Trans Perth. That one is X-Trans Perth though, that's for sure. Yes, that is set. What is the number? Checking the number. Is it 17... 17... 12? Okay, we just saw 17... 13, now 17... 12 over here. And take a shot on this bus here. I'll take a shot and uh, take some photos, I think. 1 HGP192. Next stop will be the, uh, the, uh, the thing over there. So... And there goes the third NH. I didn't see the number for that one. It just drive by, so that's why I just started. We're buying the tickets for the NH, which we're going to take very soon. Nice. This takes 90 minutes to drive around the whole island. 90 minutes on an NH. This is so nice. It feels so great right now. 90 minutes on an NH. Oh my gosh, and here they are. Yes, 90 minutes on an NH. Oh, this is going to be so nice. The last time I took an NH is just on the freaking 44. It just took uh, like a few few seconds, but this time we're gonna take this NH finally full journey on this nice bus. We're gonna man bus driving over here. It's just a man bus, so it's not really anything. But look at this NH. Oh man. Oh 
Oh man, the numbers are not here, but the seats are transparent seats still, which is nice. This is all of the NH seats, which is actually very awesome. Wow. Now I've put on the headphone for because it's a bus journey, so I know it's the train channel and the main channel, but we're gonna do some bus journey here throughout the whole island. We're on number one here. We're gonna do a whole big loop. Now we, there, I just heard the driver. We have to get off at number five, and then there's a little trail right here. We're gonna go walk to number six while the bus do a loop. So that's why that's basically what they're gonna do. And then we'll continue our way through all the way number eleven over here, and then all the way loop around and back to the start. So this is a real full journey with a circular, which is actually not weird to take. And now we wait for the bus to depart. We got the front seat here, which is exactly what we want to do. And we'll start the journey. Here we go. Now we're not gonna film like the bus channel because this this full journey is like I don't I don't know how many minutes for this full journey. We're not going to be filming real time for the everything. We're just going to do. Uh, we're not, I don't know whether we're going to do time lapse or not, but I'm probably just going to do sections when we hit the spot. Oh, NH. Here we go, NH. So the lighthouse is from 1899. There's a lot of interesting heritage, and the tours are very popular in the lighthouse too. Uh, number 11, West End. Number 11's closed at the bus stop side of West End, but we're still going out to West End. And if you notice on our maps, the other end of the island where number 11 is, we're going into Eagle Bay, Maple Cove, and that's where we're turning around. We can drop off there and pick up as well. Barracks 300 metres to the left. These days it's been converted to holiday accommodation of all sorts. You've got dormitory through here, houses for letting as well. Normally we've got a train running, but the train's off the tracks at the moment. We've got a train replacement bus. Now does anybody <laughs> want this stop number two, Kingston Barracks? No. We all good? No. We're all staying on. Kingston, Kingston II, Barracks. Well, this is <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> that we got, we got. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so usually we have the trains running through. But uh, it's off right now, so that's why we have the NH doing train replacement, just like Transperth. That's so funny. We'll continue our journey, just pass through numbers 2. Next will be number 3 at Henrietta Rocks. Made it to Henrietta Rocks, number three. Henrietta Rocks. Someone's getting on. Let's crawl up a little bit further. You can notice the old shipwreck down here to the left, folks. If you see the nose, the bow sticking up. Hello, oh, Miss. Coming on the hop on, hop off. I'm just wondering, am I ever going to pass on? No, not at all. You can leave your bike here. But if you do board, you still need a ticket. They're $25 a day, $18 concession. That's how it works, but no nah, bikes. Next stop will be Purpoise Bay. We'll be getting off at the lighthouse stop and then we'll wait for the next bus, which is actually every 30 minutes. 30 minutes per bus for this Rotness Island, and most of them will be using NHs. This is Porpoise Bay to the left. It's not a good swimming beach through here. A lot of seaweed gets swept into this boat. You can see boat moorings through here to the left, so it's a nice boat for boat mooring. There's Porpoise Bay, according to the driver. The driver is actually acting as a tour guide as well, so. Anybody? No? 
so. Blink and you miss it all this time. Oh, there goes that. Now, yeah. next stop, number five, Parker Point. So between five and six, it's 400 metres. Between six and seven, 700 metres. So it's 1,100 metres between number five, six and seven. And there are voluntary guides stationed at number five, Parker Point. They do conduct free walks. We twice the red rock nest at this time. All right, so next is five, six, seven which is actually very close by, all three stops which in, within one kilometer. So, but I'm just gonna keep on staying on the bus, I don't wanna walk. We'll get off at number eight for the lighthouse, which will be filmed later on. This is actually a very famous and a very popular quokka inhabiting spot, so <laughs> there he goes. And also I, I appreciate this guy, he saw me actually I'm filming things, so that's why he just moved it out of the way for a little bit. He usually like centering right here, literally blocking the way, so. Later on, I'm gonna try to press the bell to see whether it actually works. I, it might, I might get stared at, but let's see. Here's number five for Parker Point. This is number five here, folks. We've got voluntary guides stationed at number five, Parker Point. Now, this is number five, Parker Point. Parker Point. Parker Point. Parker Point. There you can only just see Perth City to the left. You can make out some of the skyline through there. That's Beautiful so far Perth. though, Perth City. It's just uh -huh. under 40 kilometres, but it is quite cloudy where the city sits at the moment. I don't know whether he's going to drive insanely slow to actually wait for the same passengers to get back on it on, but next is number six, which is just 400 metres away. Little Salmon Bay. Oh, it's raining now. Luckily I didn't get off. <laughs> And also, if you don't want to take the bus, you can also cycle around the whole island, which is also recommended, but... As we turn the corner here, we get more on the south side of Rottnest, more rugged and weak, so we're blocking Alright, south side, side of Rottnest Island. Very pretty. This is one of the best buses to take. Considering it's an NH2, this is so nice. I right, just passed a little Salmon Bay stop. Unfortunately, I found out that my videos are getting a little long, so that's why it's gonna actually be cut. Uh, we'll have a lot of parts cut out. And over there is the lighthouse. Later on, I'm gonna get off there, and I need to wait for my parents. Unfortunately, they got off at the earlier stop, so this bus won't wait for them, so that's why they need to wait for the next one, which is bad, so. All right, next is the uh, lighthouse stop. I'm gonna try to press the bells to see whether it works. All right, so we're approaching the lighthouse. Let's try the bell. Nice, it does work. Watch him up, Lord, here, stop. All right, made it to the lighthouse. We're gonna get off. All right, there it goes. Rottnest Island Explorer XTP1712 on the Explorer here. Hopefully it departs soon. There it goes. Boy. Hey, hey, there that goes. All right, now we're gonna walk up to the lighthouse because next bus is in 30 minutes, so we should be able to get up there for a quick view. So this is basically the path you walk up this way and you can get up to the top where the lighthouse is. Here we are, made it to the lighthouse. According to the driver slash tour guide on the NH earlier on, uh, this is now auto automated, so no longer having lighthouse keepers and it is built in 1899 very windy up here because it's pretty high up so we'll catch the next bus so I need to hurry up well walked it here's the entrance if you're actually interested in this Wajamap Wajamap lighthouse I learned how to pronounce that word Wajamap lighthouse you can pay for the tour but if you don't pay for it you cannot go up there so unfortunately we cannot because my parents are taking the next bus which is the next NH and uh, you need a ticket for that which we bought a family pack so I don't have the ticket so I have to get back down and catch the bus. So unfortunately, that's it for today here at the lighthouse, Rottnest Islands Lighthouse. We just stop eight and then you walk all the way up. 
All right, here's one HEF563. What is the number for this one? I actually have no idea, but... Let's go in. <laughs> they, set up a lot, they set up this route as Route F. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, back on board with, I don't know what the number, what's the number for this bus. I would check out when they would go all get off. There are no numbers, everything is removed, so. Uh, the front seat is not available because there's a tour guide bus, so of course there will be people occupying the front seat. When it's available, we'll go back to the front. Now let's continue. We've finished the loop now. We're not gonna get off anymore because we need to get back to our restaurant reservation on time. All right, made it to stop nine. Green Island, unfortunately, is covered by the by this butt over here now. So now, don't don't think I'm actually talking anything stupid. It's butt, B-U-T-T-E, butt. This is talking about the, the the hill. There's the Green Island right there, and no one's stopping, so skip. But there it goes. Next stop. Arriving at the next stop already, this is a very close by stop, but the next stop will be all the way down to the west end where it's actually closed off right now, but stop 11 down there Eagle Bay and Mabel Cove, which we're going to loop down there. That is actually a one-way only path and we're going to do U-turn at stop 11 later on. And found it on the Perth bus info about this bus, 1HEF563 by Australian Pinnacles Tours. 1HGF563 is by Swan Transit, TP1519, nice, <laughs> X-Transperf, TP1519 on Swan Transit. Made it to West End, you can get off here, we're not going to get off, there's the where they closed off the area for re, I think it's a renovation, some stuff, to build an extra, I think an area, I forgot what they want to build there, but the previous bus driver told to talk about it, I don't remember. Well, maybe to rest end. We're trying to cut out as many of these sections as possible. I don't want to actually film too much. This is stop 11. There are no bus stops here because the bus stop technically is actually inside the renovation area. So, unfortunately. The front seat should not be available because uh, a, a father and a daughter sitting at the front seat right now. Eagle Bay and Mabel Cove. That's where for like diving, but right now it's winter. So, of course, no one's going to do that. Down here, this is Mabel Cove. Yep, Mabel Cove down here, and we're just doing this loop, doing a U-turn right here. <laughs> Wait, what is the spot for U-turn? What? <laughs> right there. We're gonna do a U-turn to go back out. That's so funny. Oh, the bus is gonna stop here, acting as like a time stop over here to uh, just like let you to look around. NH reversing. I really want to actually be outside and actually do and film this, but NH reversing. Nice, there that goes. And it's gonna U-turn and uh, go back out now. Because this is a very narrow path, so that's why this is the only spot for U-turn. Can you all see the sleeping crocodile? I finished that time stop, we're walking back out now. You can walk some of these trails if you want to. Back at stop number 12, at uh, whatever that thing is called, I don't know the name. Roland Smith Memorial at the front. On to number 13 we're just trying to film I'm just trying to film when we hit the stop so there's the 13 right there Rocky Bay all right number 14 Stark Bay oh there there that goes and there's perfect view right there Wow Now this is not a bus full journey on the bus channel, so I thought we were just doing random clips to see the views. We're not actually trying to actually do the full journey of the route, so. Upcoming number 15 at Ricey, Ricey Beach. Actually it should be Ricey because it's actually Rice, R-I-C-E-Y. I -E don't know how to pronounce that, Ricey. Actually, the driver said Ricey, so there's that stop. Another perfect view. Oh my gosh. Now this is actually on the wrong side. This is actually towards Africa, so that's why. So. Yeah, this should be towards Africa direction, so you cannot see Perth. Alright, there's number 16, City of York slash Catherine Bay, which is right there. Wow. There are no restrictions of swimming down there. It's allowed, so that's why. 
you can go down there and swim. It is totally allowed. It's just not allowed bicycle down there, but it's allowed for you to swim. So during summer, that's like perfect time. The driver is quick doing quick deviating trip down here into Little Armstrong Bay. Usually, it doesn't go there. This doesn't go down here, but uh, it usually should go down here. But this is the deviating trip technically. Yep, there's the there's this little big area right here. Technically, it's the deviating part right here. So, but no stop. It's just a loop. So and just on our left down here at the bottom of the steps, a nice secluded little bay. Nice. You can walk down Armstrong there. Bay. Little Armstrong Bay. You can walk down there with the stairs. This uh, driver's accent is pretty funny. So it's <laughs> scuba diving. Earlier on, I said you can go scuba diving here. Shop that you see is now used to be the salt store. Past stop 18, Parakeet Bay, and the next stop is number 19, and then we're ended off with number 20 slash number one, which is the first stop that we boarded where the museum is. So we'll go back there. Finally, we finally see some houses, those are for the residents on Rodland Rodness Island, so that's why. Now turning back in to almost where we're done with this journey. And driving back into the settlement areas. Upcoming is stop number 19. The driver made a mistake by saying stop number 18, but that's okay. There's a stop right there, which is uh, very, which is very, oh, there's actually there are two stands over there. What the hell? There's one right there, the white one, and there's one in the yellow one. <laughs> what? Okay. And a U-turn back out to the settlements where the museum is. We'll just get off there now. Quite a lot of people walking here, which is nice. Definitely a nice place to do hiking, but this is actually very long if you actually want to do a whole trail. There are 20 bus stops. You want to do all 20 of them. It's literally, literally ridiculous. <laughs> Technically only 19, but if you, you don't need to do that number stop number 11 to 13 if you don't want to do that U-turn, because that's just a U-turn thing. So. Well, we're driving back to the uh, settlements now and made it to this museum and we have B94 which is 1GRL441 which is the one that you saw early on way at the front before when we spotted it left before we head into the museum. That's 1713 by PATH Transit. Alright, here we are back at the start and I'm probably going to take some photos of these buses for a quick post. Well, just a quick spot on Holy Trinity Church, right next to the bus stop, after we got off. Just a quick shot, not going into detail. So, not going into detail, just going there, quick glance, and we'll cut to the uh, Justin Eater section. Alright. Just walk back down from the top, and there's a dome here. I want. I wonder whether Mark has come here before <laughs> to the dome because he likes to visit extremities for domes. So, Rottnest Island dome right there, and here's our restaurant, Isola. Let's get in there for Justin Eater. I don't remember what's number 55, I think, or or maybe something else because this one might be premiered a little late. But I might try to get this one out as soon as possible. Definitely not 55, but. <laughs> we definitely do a lot of uh, Justin Eater. Alright, so... Set down on Isola here next to the beach. Unfortunately, the, 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 the phone cannot really actually capture that much, but there you go. Alright, so order everything according to like how we do in Justin Eater episodes. It's down in the description for all of the menu. We got a calamari, we got a lamb shoulder, we got a fish dish, and uh, some drinks. So there you go. Very basic, not very basic, but it's just the views is actually awesome. So wait for our food now. All right, Earl Grey, and uh, my my dad is being so highly aesthetic over there with his picture of the latte. And now the drink, uh, the tea is way too hot right now, so that's why. And uh, for me, drinking tea, it's like an English thing, like a British thing, but they add in, change it to milk tea, 
which I don't like milk tea and I can't drink milk tea because uh, bub this is very weird bubble tea yes bubble tea those things you, you buy from the shops like T4 and traffic I can drink those but if I drink hot milk tea like these I will get diarrhea for some reason so that's why I know so and um, we will enjoy this later on with the food Calamari, ex uh, unexpectedly large actually the plate, but $24, that's pretty decent already. I can definitely smell the nice flavors of the sea with the nice views over here. Chili aioli and lemon. Alright, here we go. Mmm. Mmm, that chili aioli. Really works out. Mm. Nice and crispy. Inside is pretty tender, not overcooked at all. The aioli is pretty nice. If the lemon on the side, of course, is perfect. And most importantly, is the views. Ah, if you actually like to drink, this is perfect with beer. But I don't. So. <laughs> Last bite for the calamari because this is actually a pretty like a fan, uh, like a fancy restaurant. So that's why before you finish this, they won't serve you the other things. So. You get these aioli on there. This is actually very good. We actually we actually ran out, so we asked them for refill, which is okay. So that's why go ahead and do that. This whole bowl is too many. So that's why need some refill definitely. Last bite is the tentacles. And here's our and here's our main course, fish over there, <laughs> and our lamb shoulder for two. Looks awesome because the uh, I really like the uh, salsa verde, which is actually on there. This is actually polenta. This is not a uh, not potato puree, not mashed potatoes. And last time in the city with that public house episode, we really enjoyed the broccolini. So let's see how they did with these broccolinis here. All right. Sorry about that, just already before I recorded, I already ate a little bit of the lamb shoulder, but it's very good over here. I reach. Lamb. Olives. Alright, so. Olives. Alright, here we go. Lamb shoulder. It's very tender, so that's why you don't need the knife technically for both of these plates. Just use your fork. Just stab through it and it's all you go. Let's see how this goes. We have some salsa verde on top, which I really like. As the as a as a lamb lover, really like lamb. Like a lot of people think that lamb is actually having a lot of like smell, like very rich flavor. But richer it is, that's lamb. So that's why I really like those like rich and uh, lamby flavor, <laughs> lamb lamb flavor inside. Some of them, some of the people don't really like it, but I really like those. But this one, this one's very good as well. Very tender, very juicy. Salsa verde on top is perfect. Mm. Mm. Served with polenta. Let's try it out. Mm. Not a fan of polenta actually. <laughs> Maybe I just don't know how to eat it, but let's try it with the lamb. Let's see how that works out. Just eating it is pretty, not my not my thing. So let's see how it goes. Mmm. 
Oh, you guys, it's pretty good. Let's get some roasted broccoli. Mmm. <laughs> Nicely charred. But broccoli, it has to be grilled and charred to a certain point. Then that would be very juicy and very delicious. And also look at this crispy skin on this lamb. Mm. Let's get some fish in here. Ooh. Very tender fish with some beans. And then there's an olive paste on the side, which I really do not want to eat that. Like, I am not a fan of olives, so that's fine. Okay. Let's get some greens, get some. I don't really want the beans, but that's okay. Mmm. Mmm. Try fish. Very tender looking. Mmm. Mm. This is so juicy. Mm. Flaky, right from the ocean. Sometimes when you're going to outside, like see uh, restaurant restaurants, they overcook some of these most of the time, but this is very good. Not fishy at all. I can taste the sweetness inside the fish. Let's get some more. All right. And I just grabbed out the bone. That's the shoulder bone right there. Literally bigger than my face. I'll put it back somewhere now. Mm. These are the meat on the bone. Very juicy. Melts in the mouth. Don't need to actually... Now, I'm not gonna say that if you don't have any teeth, you can still eat this, but... Definitely, you can mush it down. And don't need too much power. Mm. Perfect, you know. Perfect lunch with this fish next to the ocean. Last bite guys, still have a big piece over here. Look at this. Mm. Well, can't finish the meal off without a nice looking dessert. Chocolate, warm chocolate cake with vanilla ice cream called Torp. I don't remember the name, check out the description for that. Here we go. Let's break it in the middle. Nice, this looks very soft. Ooh, look at that. Mm. Some people might think after that big of a meal, it's too rich, which is like my mom. She goes um, mm, like that, because it's too rich and too sweet, but yeah. this is Western desserts, and this is how it should be. Warm cake. But now, as the saying goes, Asian peoples, when you're grown up, when you're grown up in like, like the 30 or 40s, up at the, at the upper, upper level for your age, your, 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 your views on dessert is not too sweet. That's how it should be. Which a lot of Westerners people for sure cannot understand that. Mm. It's 
get some vanilla ice cream on the side. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That was nice. Let's get some mixture with the cake with the ice cream. Well, I'll finish this and I'll see you guys outside. All right, it's made it outside and uh, overall very satisfactory. Views are awesome. Food is delicious, but it is not a perfect. Definitely something needs to be changed and removed on the plate. So I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. The olives on the fish plate, redundant. Too many polentas need more seasoning or if they change the mashed potatoes, that would be way better. So. That's why that's the thing that needs to be changed, but overall is very satisfactory. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys in the next and last destination on Rottnest Island that we're gonna visit before our 4.30 ferry back. So we'll end on Rottnest Island. We're not gonna actually continue, and we're not gonna film my journey back to Fremantle, so. Cause it's too shaky. I don't want to actually like suffer. I, I need to suffer that 30 minutes of of crazy boat ride. That's so crazy with that ride earlier on. Jesus. Now we go to the last destination of Rottnest Island that we have planned. Let's do it. And we've made it to the last stop of today's on Rottnest Island, which is this lighthouse here. I think it's called Bathurst Lighthouse, which is on the outer coast of the island. We just walked from all the way from there, walked around 15 minutes. And then you can come to this spot right here, which is the lighthouse on the outer edge. Not that one that we just saw earlier on, not the Vajamup lighthouse, not that one. This one's the Bathurst lighthouse, which is actually the other one on the other side of the, of the coast. Let's walk up there. All right, so the last one requires to pay for entry if you want to walk up to the top. More settlements down there. Do we need to pay for this one? Nope. It's not even just a paid to enter thing. It's completely closed. You cannot get in there, so. Well, this is the other end of Rottnest Island. More beaches extending. We have already looped around the whole island today. We're on an NH, which is very nice. Some people sitting there for no apparent reason just to eat just to uh, just to uh, face the wind and eat them all so and a perfect view of Rottnest Island And here are some cocker clips to end of this video. Some nice cocker clips to end of the video. That's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a very nice day here in Rottnest Island. Although in the morning it was actually raining a little bit, but in here on the island, very very smooth. No no problem on the uh, on the uh, weather whatsoever. Very cool, very chill, very cute cockers and very beautiful landscape. So really, and hope you guys enjoyed this vlog with the uh, flock of cockers back here at the settlement museum area with the NH still back there of course running there's so many here hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Rottnest Island vlog I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time for more 
contents. Remember to like and subscribe, click the bell so that you can get notifications when I post. Check out the links in the description down below for my other channels and my Instagram. Click on these videos up top. And can you say bye? Can you say bye to my viewers? Peace.